Well, I guess you could say this fight ending was fire. What's up guys, I got the pencil here, and here we are to review chapters 40 and 41 of Record of Ragnarok. Before we hop into this, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Now, let's hop into this chapter review. And I may have bamboozled you earlier this week, but don't worry, don't worry. Now that it's out, now that it's over, I can finally talk about it. Let's hit into some Record of Ragnarok. So, real quick, my history with the series, I only started reading it recently because a friend recommended it to me. No, I didn't start reading it because of the anime announcement, though that is exciting. Though, I have my mixed views on the anime so far already, but I've seen so little of it, so I can't even give, like, a proper perspective on it. So, I won't. However, let's talk about the end. The end of this fight. So... I do plan to go in depth about the entire fight, I plan to do that for every single fight, my thoughts on them, how I would change them, how I would fix them, blah blah blah, but I'm just going to be talking about these last two chapters and what I think of them. So I really really like these last two chapters after rereading the entire fight. If I want to give you my initial reaction to the two chapters, I thought it was a very, very, uh, not necessarily a poor way to end the fights, but a very like luster way. I feel like the ends of all the other four fights were such so much more dramatic, so much more climactic, so much more heft, they had so much more weight to them, like, you have the end of Thor versus Lubu, ending with Thor slaying his entire army out of respect for the man who he once could have been rivals with, you have Adam versus Zeus, with Zeus, the leader of all the gods, saying that, yes, if I'm being completely honest, I would have lost that fight because I dropped to my knees, Adam never did, he fought on even in death, and all of humanity cheering for him at the end. Sasaki versus Poseidon, it ended with Poseidon's bitter defeat, and everyone being in such shock, and Sasaki's own happiness of finally winning his first fight ever. Then you have Jack versus Hercules, where Hercules ends up resigning his to his fate and giving himself up for humanity, giving Jack one last hug, and Jack ending with a sad smile on his face, realizing that yes, he may have won, but he still lost. All that was good. And next, then this fight ends with um, Shiva kicking Raiden's head off. And initially I was like, this fight ending sucks. And I think, little, little, little thoughts about the entire fight real quick. I think my main issue with this fight is that it was interspersed with a much more interesting concept like this fight felt horribly paced to me but i'll go into that later not in this video later but later but i think the reason why in the back of my mind even as i reread the fight even as i reread all of this i was still thinking of what happened at the start of this fight with the entire buddha mess but i'll talk about that later i think the fight ended awkwardly at first but now looking back on it i can definitely see where it comes from because the way that shiva activates his final mode is the same way that raiden activated his true power and seeing both of them go all out in this final dance to the death it's very very satisfying to watch because you can tell these two are people who have always had to hold back for one reason or another and they were inherently kind people. While the characterization of Shiva throughout early Record of Ragnarok wouldn't really tell you that, you can definitely see it now that both of these people are people with dreams and weights on their back, and seeing them finally be able to just release and go all out, whether it be not for the sake of Ragnarok, but for the sake of each other, proving that yes, this is the peak of Bosvalga and I'm not sure how to pronounce it, I'm sorry if I butchered that horribly, the peak of India and the peak of Sumo, those two styles going against each other and seeing they come to this amazing conclusion where it's fist versus foot and foot wins and kicks Raiden's arm off and then Raiden's like hold on all right Shiva you win third please just leave and I love the thing that I really really like is that Raiden is a nice guy both of these two were characterized weirdly for the characters that ended up becoming but i think that was done with a purpose shiva was characterized characterized as this horribly like uptight ah ha ha i'm the peak of everything like like you would expect like you know the king of destroyers to be the lead of all of the gods of india based on what they were going with like you know he's an arrogant leader rather than a kind one and then of course you have right his initial characterization as this lusty weird I sleep with anything and everything and I want to sleep with everything and anything kind of guy to end up being this really nice guy both who do it for the people that they care for and seeing that Shiva's weight ended up being more 
it it's interesting to see and it's interesting to see both of their calm nice natures come out at the end like the true versions of themselves not the selves that they betray to everyone else the selves that they are truly shiva doesn't just execute raiden when he very easily could have and he really should have think about it she was burning up inside because he's simulated his atman and he's burning alive however he lets he lets raiden have that final conversation with Thrud, and and the great thing is that Raiden's like, please, through get off, and through stays with him. Because despite how little time they've had with each other, the fight's like 13 minutes long. Despite that little time, since through has found someone that she don't think she doesn't think she'll ever find again. And he's found someone he doesn't think he'll ever find again. So much that he's willing to let her go so he can die alone. And seeing them resign together, I think that's very, very beautiful. And I think Shiva defeating him after letting that happen after letting them come to their own conclusions and lay out all their grievances with the end of the fight seeing all that happen and then finally shiva kicking his head off and being like thanks human and then he pauses and goes no ride into Hemon. thanks to you this was the best fight of our lives i think that's great i i like the respect that one by one the gods that lose or just the gods in general that are fighting gain res even if they win they gain respect for the humans thor gained respect for lubu and his entire army zeus gained respect for all of humanity and adam especially poseidon gain didn't gain respect to the very end but that was his cost he died for it horribly but everyone else had to gain respect for humanity hercules always loved humanity and he w that was that was a respect that was given to humanity from the gods just because of the feat of defeating hercules and finally shiva gave a human his respect by saying his name he was not a human no lore he was you know he was a human but he was a human that had gained the respect of a god and not just any god the peak of all of india and i think that's wonderful any and like any of the grievances i had i still think this fight is very not necessarily anticlimactic it's drawn beautifully Though I can, I can definitely see the way Shiva's portrayal has changed now that he's become a fighter. Like, I've recently read through a good chunk of the series because I'm planning to talk about this for a long time. So I've been able to see Shiva's portrayal change, but I think it's appropriate for his fight. And now I'm intrigued. I initially wanted to wait even longer before starting to talk about Record of Ragnarok. I wanted to wait till Chapter 42 came out because a big part of all the fights is their aftermath and seeing what comes next. However, I figured this is a good time to talk about it. Chapters just came out. I have nothing else to review this Thursday. And I think that, yeah, I think the, I think these two chapters are very, very good. I'm glad they double dropped because I thought I was going to have to wait till February to talk about Record of Ragnarok just because I thought this fight was going to go on for longer. However, I'm, I'm glad they double dropped. I'm glad we're here. And honestly, it was just it was just a nice, beautiful fight. That's the thing. It's a wonderful way to conclude that fight between these two characters specifically i think if any of the other fights had ended this way i don't think i would have been as pleased with it but i think since it's because it's shiva and raiden two characters who have in their worlds have completely different views of how they are as people seeing them end like this is satisfying for both of their characters and i'm intrigued i'm very very intrigued who do i think is gonna fight next i have no idea they've introduced um the child warrior the child captain and the older captain and we know that Odin is, is, is slated to fight. We know that there are many other people slated to fight, Loki included. But I'm, I'm not sure who's next. This, I'm wondering who the follow-up is. Because obviously Brunhild's next goal is to try and at least tie it up again. And I, I don't know. I'm not, not like, it's not, and the weird thing is, well, I feel like we're burning through a lot of the peaks of humanity, which is... No, I'm going to talk about that later when I talk about Jack versus Hercules. I feel like what we're... We haven't even, like, scratched the surface. Well, we no, we've scratched the surface. We had Zeus already. But I feel like we're going to get a really interesting fight. Because of who's left of the gods, Anubis, Odin, Loki, all these people, I think it's going to be very, very interesting to see what's going on next. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting seeing the reactions in Chapter 42. I want to see what everyone's feeling about about like the way this battle went because i feel like everyone else is going to reflect in a similar way that i'm reflecting on it where it's like hmm you know what that was good and like i understand humanity is going to be sad because you know that really 
the gods lose. They don't lose anything. They just go back and wait another 2,000 years, I do believe. However, I think what is interesting is that the humans are going to be losing something. But they've, even the humans who saw the end of this fight, they were drawing and painting the way the fight was going. Because it was that amazing. And I like that. So I'm, wonder, I'm just wondering how people are going to react. That's that's one of my favorite parts of Record of Ragnarok, seeing the reactions post-mortem, post the end of the fight. And I'm intrigued to see what the next fight is going to be. Uh, I wish, I not I wish, I hope. Actually, no, no, I think we're in a good mood for another sword fight because Sas Sasuke was two whole fights away. I think the only issue, and this is just a general issue I have with Record of Ragnarok, since it releases monthly, the fights feel a lot longer than they are, and I'm lucky that I got into Record of Ragnarok as late as I did, because I got to read four straight fights. I got to read from Lubu versus Thor all the way to Hercules versus Jack, and my first technical fight I've had to wait through is this one. And I'm intrigued to see where things are going. I hope we get another interesting fight, obviously. I want to see reactions to the end of the fight in the next chapter, and I would also like to see who's going to be fighting next, but at the same time, I really, really, really enjoy this side stuff, like the hypothetical traitor Buddha versus the rest of the gods, uh, all the humans who are surviving or who has su survived their fight, such as Jack and Sasaki talking about like the possibility that they may be needed again, all, all of it's super interesting, however, I'm going to go in more in depth about that, and like, Am I going to make a theory video? I may make a theory video. But I think that's it for these chapters. I think they're good. If I had to rate them both, I'm going to rate them as like one super chapter. It's what I'd do if any other manga ever double released. I'd say upon reflection, it's a solid 8 out of 10. Is it my favorite way that a fight has ended? No. But for the context of the situation, it's still very, very good. So I like it a lot. It's an 8 out of 10 fight ending. That's all. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is That Guy with a Pencil, writing off.